As I indicated at the beginning of Mass, today is the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe. Maximilian Kolbe was a Franciscan priest um, back in 1939 when Hitler and the Nazis invaded Poland. Uh, his monastery, monastery came under uh, great scrutiny. They were very critical of what was taking place in Germany and certainly uh, in what was beginning to take place in Poland. Uh, Maximilian Kolbe uh, was arrested, ultimately was sent to Ga Auschwitz prison. And uh, that was one of the death camps, as we know, from World War II. And uh, on one particular occasion, uh, three prisoners escaped from Auschwitz. Uh, in retribution for the rest of the prisoners, uh, ten men were chosen at random to be starved to death. One of the men uh, spoke up quickly and said, my wife and my children, and began to cry out with the thought of being put to death. Uh, at that point, Maximilian Kolbe stepped forward and uh, asked the person in charge if he would be able to swap places uh, with that man. He ultimately was starved to death for two weeks, but at the end of two weeks, uh, he was found to be still alive and uh, then ultimately was given a, a lethal injection that ended his life. Uh, tomorrow is the feast of our Blessed Lady's Assumption. Uh, Maximilian Kolbe had great devotion to our Blessed Lady and uh, ironically he was cremated on August 15th, uh, 1941. In 1982, uh, Pope John Paul II declared him a saint and a martyr in the life of the church today. We think about uh, Maximilian Kolbe and we think about the tremendous sacrifice that he made and the wonderful example of self-sacrificing love that his life represents to us. Um, certainly a Christ figure, a modern Christ figure, uh, who stood up um, for what he believed in and who decried uh, the terrible atrocities that were being uh, visited upon the Polish people and upon the German people, upon the Jewish people in both countries. Uh, in fact, the monastery that um, Colby had, uh, what was the uh, in charge of, had uh, provided some shelter for some 2,000 Jews uh, during the dark days of World War II. When we think about uh, him today, particularly against the background of the world that we live in today, um, his example provides a wonderful thing for us to be challenged by, especially what took place in Charlottesville this past weekend. Uh, there was a demonstration by neo-Nazis, by the so-called alt-right, the Ku Klux Klan, um, demonstrating God knows for what, representing bigotry and hatred. The people in Charlottesville obviously were very upset by the fact that their city or their town would be used for such a demonstration. And obviously because of the hatred and bigotry there, uh, the violence that ensued, I suspect, was not surprising for many. Our hearts go out to the people of Charlottesville as they experience this ter terrible atrocity in their midst, particularly to the family of the woman who lost her life when one of these people from the uh, alt-right or the Ku Klux Klan or whatever drove a vehicle into a crowd and uh, killed her and injured 19 people. Terrible, terrible weekend in Charlottesville. Uh, bigotry, hatred, not unlike the bigotry and hatred that was uh, at the root of what gave us Nazi Germany. Today, as we reflect upon the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe, and we reflect upon what's taking place in our own nation today, it ought to be a wake-up call for us all to really and truly not ever uh, retreat from calling out bigotry and hatred wherever we find it. Um, it's a terrible kind of thing when people look at other people and because they're different, uh, because they have a different color of skin, uh, because of the language they use or the accents or whatever, somehow are described as being less than worthy uh, of citizenship in our country. Um, the kind of bigotry that we saw in Charlottesville this past weekend really and truly deserves to be called out um, by all of us today. When we sit by, idly by, and do nothing, um, we become almost uh, co-conspirators, if you will. We almost become participants in encouraging that kind of bigotry and hatred uh, and ultimately violence that we saw in Charlottesville uh, this past weekend. Back in 1933, if more people in Germany had spoken out against Hitler and the Nazis and the Third Reich, um, perhaps World War II could have been avoided. Perhaps the millions of people who lost their lives in death camps could have been avoided. Um, 
We're reminded of that famous quote from Dante Alighieri, who said that in times of moral crisis, uh, the darkest places of hell have been reserved for those people who maintain their neutrality. When we are faced with the kind of hatred and bigotry that we saw in Charlottesville this weekend, um, we ought never to be neutral. We need to call it out for what it is. Bigotry, hatred, truly the antithesis of what we represent in our Catholic Christian faith. And so today, as we thank God for the gift of Maximilian Kolbe's example, uh, we also pray that we can have that same kind of courage that so distinguished his life, that ultimately led him to give his life in service, uh, uh, give his life basically for a stranger so that a stranger can live, um, truly following in the example of Christ, following in his footsteps in a very beautiful and remarkable way. Um, may God bless us today. May God bless the people of Charlottesville. And may the peace and justice for which Jesus represents in his life become a reality in our country today.